Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I want to talk to you about emergency lighting. Now, my definition of emergency lighting is lighting that comes on automatically uh, in the event of a power failure that allows you to uh, egress a building or uh, be able to move around safely after a disaster or, again, just after a power failure. The worst thing in the world is to be left sitting in the dark with <clears throat> no power. This kind of ramped from uh, a project I was doing in my amateur radio shack. Uh, I was setting everything up, all my radios and uh, communications equipment, to operate on uh, failover 12 volts whenever there was a commercial power outage. Um, this would give me the ability to communicate uh, up until a time that I can get my generator deployed. So... Um, Running the test, of course, for that meant pulling the plug on the house. When I did that, I realized I couldn't see anything because I didn't bother to put any 12-volt lighting in my shack. So I started looking for 12-volt lighting, something I could control with a switch, maybe something that came on automatically. This is what led to emergency lighting for my house. So without any further ado... oh. As uh, my wife always says, don't forget to remind them to subscribe. So if you enjoy the videos, click the subscribe button. Make sure you click the little notification tab there as well uh, so you get notified when we come out with new videos. Uh, anyway, with that, let's go ahead and talk about emergency lighting. Well, hi, everybody. Stu, AG6AG, and uh, we're going to talk about emergency lighting, um, lighting that you can set up uh, in case there's a power failure that's going to automatically turn on and give you light to uh, egress out of a room or a building in the event of a disaster or, you know, just be able to see your way around that initial period of time when you had the power failure. Um, bear in mind that I always carry a flashlight. Always, okay? It's always with me, and uh, there's always a flashlight nearby for me to grab. I have a flashlight on my nightstand. Um, but in a disaster, a flashlight on your nightstand could roll back behind the nightstand, or you could go to grab it and knock it on the floor. Again, it's completely dark. It may have been after an earthquake. You don't know. It's going to be difficult to see. This whole adventure, by the way, started because I was in the process of switching over my shack to be able to do an automatic failover to 12 volts uh, in the event of a power failure. Uh, long story short, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm an amateur radio operator, and I, I am involved in emergency communications um, and disaster communications. And, uh, you know, there's a period of time before we get activated that we're actually exchanging information and trying to get an assessment of what's going on between each other as amateur radio operators in a particular area. Um, now, if all the power is out and you rely on electricity for, uh, you know, your radios, uh, you know, you're going to be walking down to the car and talking or getting on a little handy talkie, and you won't be really useful as, uh, you know, a member of a large group of amateur radio operators trying to exchange information. All that behind us, got it all set up, and I promise, by the way, I'll do a video on how I did that, because it uh, it did take some thinking and some, uh, th some thought on what I really needed to do. Uh, but um, I realized when I ran my first test that I had no electricity in the shack, therefore I had no lights in the shack. So I decided I needed to find lighting for the shack that I could turn on and off, right, uh, in, that would run off 12 volts. Well, the obvious choice for me would be the uh, uh, would be LED lights, and I did find these LED lights over on Amazon. Uh, I think it was four of them for uh, no, $24, I think, as this ad says here. Um, the issue with these was uh, that uh, they were radio quiet, which is important to me. Uh, if you're not an amateur radio operator, these kinds of things don't matter. I also had 
the 12 volt infrastructure built into my shack so I could just tie the this in <clears throat> to the battery system that I'd already installed and I could put a little toggle switch on it so uh, you know if I had light to get into the shack I just would reach over and this is kind of neat you'll see the light come up just a little over my head I'll turn it off um, it has enough light one of these has enough light to light all my radio components so I can see their dials and their buttons and enough light that I can write on my desk write down information okay and that was the goal, and one of those did that. Now, this picture's really, really deceiving. They look pretty big. They're not. Let's, uh, let's cut real quick. I want to show you a picture of this compared to my keyboard. Small, huh? Anyway, so I purchased a set of these lights, and uh, then I realized something that was, you know, a little mind-boggling. Uh, I hadn't checked any of the emergency lights that we had in the house. As a matter of fact, we didn't have many. I think we had one or two, one that was by the bathroom in our bedroom. We didn't have any in the hallway, you know. And as I started to check these things, and uh, these things actually, let's see, um, give you a general idea. These were little devices just like this um, that uh, basically... Uh, um, Shows the, uh, let me get to that picture, come back here, there we go. Uh, basically just plug into the outlet and, uh, you know, they weren't bad little items, uh, but I realized that if I wanted to deploy these in different places in the house, those outlets would have to be accessible. And uh, for the most part, my, uh, my significant other loves to put furniture in front of outlets. I'm not really sure why, it seems to be uh, uh, a thing with our generation. But uh, anyway, it made it kind of impractical to use this kind of lighting for emergency lights. So I started looking around at what was available. Uh, my goodness, you know, we've got uh, all these packages of lights that I could hook up, that I could mount. But they're kind of big and they're kind of ugly. God, imagine if I put a big exit sign at our bedroom door. My, my, my wife would not like that. Um, you know, but they, they come in all sorts of different arrangements, but there are a lot that also just plug into the uh, uh, electrical outlets. Uh, some contain flashlights, like the one I was uh, showing earlier. Uh, but I thought about it, and I said, you know, for me, that probably isn't going to work. And, uh, gee, something big like this that i got to mount up on the wall probably isn't going to work either. And then, you know, it's funny. I... Uh, I have to say that I remembered these, and I had, you know, I only used one of them, and I had three left, and I figured I could experiment with that a little bit. Well, so I needed to figure out a couple things. Uh, first off, I needed to figure out, okay, they're 12 volts, and I'm not going to have any electricity, so how am I going to power them? Well, I had three or four of these 20-amp-hour uh, lead-acid-sealed batteries in inventory. And I decided, oh, let's pull one of those out. I mean, 20 amp hour, uh, my gosh, on these little lights, I could probably run them easily, easily for 24 to 48 hours. And even longer if I turned them on and off when I needed them. Obviously, you don't need them during the day. You would turn them off. Um, so I looked at uh, this and said, this is a great option for a power supply. Now, Boy, I've got to tell you, you don't need this much power if you're only going to run a few lights, a couple, three. This is overkill. But as a very good friend of mine once told me, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. But uh, yeah, that's a whole other subject. On the other side, uh, you could get something much smaller. These are, these are only about 18 bucks, and uh, this is a 7 amp hour battery. This is probably more than effective for... Uh, everything that you're going to do uh, with it. Uh, like I said, I had the other ones in stock. Uh, if you really want to go with the higher power, you know, go for it. Uh, go for the 20 amp. Uh, it's an excellent battery. I have really good luck with these batteries. Um, now, I needed to figure out a way to control the power, right? So, how do I do that? Well, I was in automotive repair for a number of years, and I happen to know that automotive relays are really great at controlling 
uh, you know, things that turn on and things that turn off. And this particular unit here, if you look at the wiring diagram as best as you can, has both a energized path and a non-energized path. So in other words, I can place power uh, to the relay to have it close and have no power going to the output. Or I can have it so when it closes, there's power going to the outlet. And vice versa, when it's open, there's power going to the outlet, but when it's closed, there's no power going to the outlet. Well, guess what? This is perfect, right? Because all I need to do is use a 12-volt uh, power source going into this relay, coming off like a wall wart, okay, or a 12-volt power supply, and that will collapse the relay, and the relay going to nothing will not light the lights. If that power source goes away, the lights are going to come on connected to the battery. Problem solved. All right. So then, of course, I needed to figure out how I was going to wire those lights. And uh, I use standard um, security uh, shielded cable. Okay. Now, why did I use this? Well, to be honest, I had 500 feet of it in stock over uh, on the, you know, under the bench. And I thought, yeah, you know, let's use this. This is already here. Um, you don't need to buy that much cable. You're probably not going to use 500 feet. Uh, if you do a lot of do-it-yourself stuff, this is, this is great stuff to have around, but uh, not a requirement. Uh, you can use any cable you want. Uh, you can use any cable that's rated for uh, uh, enough amps that is going to manage your connection to the lights. And the lights are very, very low draw. So uh, they work really well. And again, you know, I had this under the shelf. So simple for me to use, right? Uh, let's see. And I believe, ah, yes. So I want to keep that battery charged, right? I happen to really like these trickle chargers. There's lots of other options you can use to charge the battery. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, you could have one of these that you use, or you might have a battery charger out in your garage. You could, once a month, you know, just um, surface charge that uh, battery that you're using. You don't need it on there all the time. This is $50 for me to be lazy, okay? And know that I can look at a green light and know that the charging status of the battery is good. By the way, I'm going to toss this out too. Um, you have got to, got to uh, utilize the uh, uh, testing procedures, right? As far as every 90 days, you need to verify that battery is good, has a good surface charge on it. You need to test the lights, right? Uh, simulate a power failure. I'm going to demonstrate what I do to test everything out uh, and everything that goes with that. So, let's go with a totally, totally configured system. All right. Well, there is the light. And I am going to throw the switch. If I can get a shot on this. I'm going to throw the switch down here. Simulating the power failure. And if you look up here now, let me see if I can get a decent angle on this. Wow, a lot of light coming out of that. Let me turn uh, the power back on, going to the relay. So you can see how this works and what the concept is. Now I can have lots of these lights. Right now I have a light in my bedroom, which we're looking at here where the controller lives. I also have a light in the bathroom. I have a light in the hallway just outside. I have a light uh, down in the staircase. Uh, and I plan to add some additional lights downstairs. Um, the only issue I'm having right now is deciding if I'm going to put switches on those lights uh, to allow me to individually turn them on and off. And I think I am. Uh, but the other thought is, do I put all the switches by the controller where every wire comes to and make like a big junction box? Or how am I going to do that? So I haven't really decided that yet. Uh, I'll try to get some more info on that, though. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, step back from the remote here and uh, jump back on the uh, main computer.
I hope you enjoyed this video and this how-to. Um, there are details available. Uh, I'm going to be doing the actual wiring diagram, but to be honest with you, the one on the back of the relay is the one that you need to look at. Um, again, you can make a choice of uh, whatever equipment you want to do this. Just keep some stuff in mind. You want to make sure batteries are well ventilated. Uh, sealed batteries can discharge uh, acid gas uh, if they're being overcharged. So make sure if you've got them on a charger, it is a smart charger. Uh, check the voltage on those batteries all the time. Do regular inspections. Every 90 days, make sure that you test to see if uh, everything still works, right? Um, there are some things that can fail. That little uh, power brick thing that we're using, uh, you know, the wall wart to energize the relay can fail. I mean, they do go out, and I happened to use one that was uh, sitting in a box someplace that I had from some other project. So, so far, so good. But be aware, you know, um, stuff can break. Anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I try to answer all questions within about a day, okay? Uh, also, um, hey, if you haven't already, I know you're probably getting tired of hearing it, but go ahead and click that subscribe button for me, will you? Uh, and tell your friends. I love doing these videos. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope to hear you out on the air.